Well, there is Scotiabank Arena, the home of the Toronto Maple Leafs, who as of yesterday will officially host playoff games as they clinch their playoff spot. But before that begins, on April 11th, Scotiabank Arena will welcome home a local favorite and diehard Leafs fan. Canadian rapper Nav will finish his Never Sleep Tour live in T.O. He joins us now to discuss. Uh, first off, thank you for joining the show. We appreciate the time. As uh, the Canadian in the room who spent a lot of time in Toronto, I'm just going to go right to it, Nav. You're rocking the blue and white right now. Who, who are we representing? Is this a personalized jersey? Give, give me the 411 here. I can, I can show you. It's, it's from Austin Matthews, you know what I'm saying? Oh, no it's big deal. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> so what, you, you Austin, and Justin Bieber just hanging around uh, in the offseason or what? I mean, nah, I've, I've actually never got to hang out with uh, uh, neither of them, but uh, I spoke to Austin <laughs> Matthew a couple of times on DM and stuff, just telling him he's the GOAT and stuff, you know? Oh, of course, nice, of course. Nice. Well, listen, we appreciate you joining the show. You know, we're going to get into the tour and, and everything else, but I'll, I'll start with this. Like, how long have you been a, a Leaf fan, and where does your love of the game come from? Um, my love of the game really comes from... Um, a lot of my older cousins growing up were big Leafs fans. So I watched people like Matt Sundin, Ty Domi, yes. you know, Tuckers and all that. And then also myself, like I used to go to a middle school called West Humber Junior Middle. And they used to have like a skating program. There's an outdoor rink down the hill from the school. So they'd have like a bunch of used skates that we like use and go skate and learn how to skate. But I ended up just taking one of the skates home and teaching myself, you know what I mean? So I started <laughs> playing hockey and game. <laughs> you're he's you're somebody that's you can you taught yourself to play the piano you teach yourself how to skate i mean you haven't needed any help you're doing nicely on your own i mean we, we could you know that's debatable i did take a little <laughs> bit of piano lessons but <laughs> no, most of it self-taught <laughs> uh, well how's the tour going so far and how does it feel to be finishing it up back home in toronto i mean the tour has been great i haven't been on the road for like three four years obviously because of covid and everything but it just feels good to be back on the road and touching the fans and seeing these big crowds and stuff. And I've never done the Scotiabank Arena myself. The only time I've ever performed there was with um, The Weeknd. So I'm excited to just do this um, on my own and with Bryson Tiller and stuff, you know? Uh, it's, it sounds like it's going to be a blast. Yeah. Uh, and that's just coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, you're a Leafs fan. Are you going to rock this jersey at the concert? And, you know, how do you feel about the Leafs uh. this year? Have you had a chance to continue following the team, even though you're on the road and you're doing shows all the time? Uh, how, how do you watch the games and what do you make of the team? Uh, this season, I haven't been uh, keeping up as much as last season. But last season, we went to quite a few games with my friends, like in the boxes and stuff. We watched the... We actually, unfortunately, watched the game where they got eliminated from yeah. the, the oh, playoffs. Well. So, yeah, <laughs> that was one of, my, one of my close friends. That was his first game ever, and I'm like, wow, what an experience, man. Like, <laughs> great. But, you know, hopefully this year they do better, you know what I'm saying? Well, uh, listen, uh, I think they've got a chance yeah, to do I better. Agree. We're feeling better about their chances at this year moving forward. You mentioned, you know, learning, you know, kind of teaching yourself to play hockey. I see in the notes there you were playing at this uh, Sunnydale, what is it, Sunnydale Acres Rink. I mean, what was that like? Um, that was, it was just really fun, like a lot of shinny games. It'd be, it'd give you, um, you, you, you become really good at aiming the puck because there's no goalie sometimes and you got to hit the post to score. Yeah, there was so like, there was, oh, was there no weird. netting? There was no netting even no, in the No, there net? was nets. Pro there was proper boards, everything, like the high ones behind the net, everything. Uh -huh. It's actually a really good rig. You could look it okay. up on Google. It's nice. Okay, all like right. you got to hit the post to yeah, score. Right. That's interesting. Yeah, well, with no goalies, you yeah. got to hit the post yeah. so you turn the nets over, one yeah. or the other. That's it. So. Totally. Right. Um, let me ask you this. You know, in sports and, and, and in hockey in particular, right, we always talk to guys about, like, what's being played in the room? What gets you amped up for a yeah. game? What gets you feeling good before a puck drop, right? And the types of music and playlists that go on throughout the league, they vary. They're all over the place. So I'll ask you this. What is a pre-concert sort of warm-up for you is this a thing that happens for artists like are you listening to a certain type of music before your own show to get you set or, or give us kind of the background on on a pre-show routine for you pre-show routine is really like just like visualizing the end result of coming off the stage feeling happy and then you know obviously take a couple of shots of tequila to get the nerves off <laughs> and then if I, if I had to pick a song that i listen to before i come on on stage it would be uh 20 minutes by little uzi because that song is all about 20 minutes before he goes on stage Oh, cool. I've never heard it. I'm going to have to that's look a it good, up. That's a good idea. And just for the record, now we, we do a couple of shots of tequila before yeah. our show, and it's five days a week, so it can be a little much. 
<laughs> our tolerance, though. Yes, yes, our tolerance. Way up. Way, 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 way up. What is it? What, I always wonder about, I mean, hockey players are performers. You're a performer. What is it like to be in the big arena and in the moment when everything is kind of going around, going on around you and you're kind of controlling the whole group? Um, it's, it's a little bit like, obviously, you get some nerves before you get on stage, but... I like to say that, like, when I once I get on stage and the ears are in, and I hear, you know, the music playing in my ears, I'm it's ready to go. I just autopilot, you know what I mean? And I, I think hockey players can uh, relate. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. I think, you know, we've heard a lot of athletes in general talk about this idea that once they're in the game, regardless of what's going on, will I be traded? I'm not having a good, like, whatever it is, once they're playing, they're just playing. They're in yeah. it. That's what, they, that's what they've done their whole lives. So yeah. it, it comes naturally. Um, for any viewers that are watching now that, that don't know who you are, don't know what type of music um, you bring to the table, give us kind of the background on the album. What can fans expect? I'm sure a lot of people watching here in the United States are going to get on the Internet and Google you and look up your music uh what will they find um a lot of uh, personal lyrics and and uh, a lot of great production by myself and uh, as well as my close peers and just really good quality music and you know we have uh songs where it's like you know a personal moment or a party moment or a um a sad moment so it's, it's a little bit of everything for everybody very nice very nice where uh, you know i mentioned at the start i mean you know i read up on you 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 kind of self-taught with the piano how do were you always somebody that was into music as a small child yeah i started making beats when i was around 15 or 16 years old mm -hmm. and then when it came time to like graduate high school i didn't know what i wanted to do and like you know having traditional indian parents uh it was kind of tricky telling them like i want to go to like the studio school and stuff but <laughs> they supported it and i did that for a couple of years and there's a lot of ups and downs a lot of giving up but the one more time that i hit i, I hit gold you know what i mean Wow. Okay, so there were times where you're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work out for me. Obviously, it now has. What made you go for that one more time? Like, what's what's the background on that story? I feel like you have to do a lot of things uh, that you don't like to figure out what you do like. So I worked some jobs and did some, you know, odd jobs and some stuff like that that made me really realize that uh, what I actually want to do. Yeah, sometimes you, you, you think, oh, I'm not going to do it anymore. You try something else, and you're like, nah, this nah. ain't it. <laughs> what, what, what was the worst of those jobs? What was something you did that you were like, no? <laughs> oh, my God, Cheese Factory. <laughs> cheese Factory! <laughs> I, never knew, I never knew cheese was this heavy. Like, it's so heavy, <laughs> and it hurts your back. And I got these old people working with me that, you know, they're not going... Like, they're good with their life at that point. I'm young as hell. It just didn't make sense for me. <laughs> the cheese factory. That was the end that of it. it. That was the end that of it for now. He's like, back to the studio I go. Obviously, it has really worked out. Yeah. Again, make sure I you... I was very short-lived, though. That was only, like, one week from, like, a job agency. I got out of there in one week. Good. But it was the worst job. It was good. the worst job. That's good. how bad it was. Seven yeah. days. He was, yeah. he was yeah. done. Well, listen, congrats on the tour. Congrats on the show coming up at Scotiabank Arena uh, April 11th. As we say goodbye, if you had a goal song, like a song that would play after you scored a goal, Nav, what would it be? It'd be Never Sleep featuring Travis Scott. Ah, you know what I'm baby. I love all it. Right. I love it. Con I like it. Congrats on all the success. I'm glad you're not still working at the Cheese Factory. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate the time. We'll keep an eye out for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>